All right, everyone. In this video, I'm going to, going to be starting to show you how to create a rocket nozzle injector. Um, this is the first real freeform video in the SolidWorks Baby Steps series that I've been doing. Whereas, whereas the other videos have been more oriented towards teaching you techniques, this is designed to give you an example application. And that's really what you have to do with this software. You kind of just have to go out there and build and build and build in order to just build up the skill set. Build, no pun intended. Um, now, you'll notice I went ahead and started without you because SolidWorks before was just tending to attempt to thwart me and throw a wrench into everything I was trying to tell it to do. Um, so I kind of just went ahead and sketched something out real fast just to make sure it would work. Um, I'll bring you up to speed on it real fast. It's important to know that the rocket nozzle injector that we're creating is just for show, okay? It's just for tutorial purposes. It's just to have something that looks nice, but it won't necessarily be functional, nor will it be in any way accurate to what an actual rocket nozzle injector would look like. I've done a little bit of a studying on it. I mean, again, I'm trying to go into aerospace. So I've done a little bit of a research, a little bit of a studying. I know a little bit of the design equations, but this isn't designed to mimic any of those. I'm not calculating fuel requirements, flow rates, pressure drops, anything of that nature. This is just kind of designed to, oh, hey, what does one look like? Let's make it in SolidWorks, that kind of thing. That's what you need to really learn and start to try to pick up is looking at something and then saying, oh, how would I do that? I mean, I'm not saying walk around, you know, look for, oh, that's a revolved base. No. I mean, if you did that, I'd probably be scared of you. Um, but seeing and knowing how to model is definitely a skill set you, you'll want to develop. So that being said, I already have that shape out. Let me get to it. This outside curve is five inches, five inches radius. The interior curve is 4.875, so four and seven eighths inches. The wall thickness is therefore an eighth of an inch. Um, it's an exact 90 degree turn. It's a quarter circle. Now, the reason why we did this is because we want it to be a hemisphere, so we're going to revolve around the center axis. Now, as you know from the, you know, rocket nozzle video I just did, you can select a part of a sketch to use as a revolution axis if it is the axis you want. You know, you can ideally rotate around any axis, provided it fits your criteria. We can rotate around this axis. We'll just have our injector facing the other way around. Um, but there's nothing preventing us from, from being kind of freeform with it. If you're real kind of gung-ho about doing everything to the T, dotting your, dotting your I's, crossing your T's, you can insert reference geometry and reference a part of your sketch as that. But granted, we're going to be referencing the sketch anyway. It's kind of pointless to try and do that. So again, go revolve boss base. Click it, and you'll instantly see that SolidWorks recognizes it. The first time I tried to do this, SolidWorks just didn't decide to play nice with me. It decided it wanted to fight me. So naturally, I kind of got frustrated. And so I decided... <laughs> I decided to redo the video because of that. So now we have a big, flat, ugly dome. Now here is what we're going to do. Before I truncate the video, I'm going to probably end it in about a minute or so. Mainly because this video is more about setting up the conditions for that for the patterning we're going to be doing in the second part. Um, whereas... I mean, obviously, the second part's going to be just doing it. 
And that should teach you two things. The first thing being all too well how I think. I naturally kind of compartmentalize thoughts. Um, the other thing is that you should try and think in terms of ad workflow. Like what simple operations should I be doing first? What should I be doing second? What should I be doing third? Now I'll shut up and I'll explain what I just did while I was kind of blabbing my head off. I went up here to insert reference geometry and I added a plane. You can see it's grayed out now because the option box is already open. Um, and then I clicked this flat underside face of the revolution. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to create a reference plane. We're going to pattern it up by using the offset distance. And we're going to pattern it up all the way about six inches. So the plane will rest about an inch high of the hemisphere. This is why we can then punch the injectors, the outlets, everything downwards into the model rather than trying to figure out how to manipulate them from there. Um, reference planes are something you really need to learn. Um, SOLIDWORKS, depending on the conditions, will get rather finicky as far as how you define them, such as if you rotate a cylinder, you oftentimes have to add perpendicular reference points to go on these third and you know, second and third references. But when, it, when you have a flat face that you want to offset, it's as simple as clicking that face and and then enabling the offset and setting distance. Um, that be, that also, um, planes are, I mean, sketches are created on planes. Um, I haven't yet found out if you could sketch onto a raw surface. Um, so yeah, that's something that you really need to kind of get used to, get experience with, because planes and other features, points, reference axes, they are going to come up in the future. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll be about it for this video. The next one, again, I will actually be explaining how to do something with this model and just make a pretty half, half sphere and create a weird blue square above it. All right, take, take care, everyone. Um, stay tuned for the next video, which I'm going to be doing right after this.